Steve, welcome back to Clear Direct. Big day at the Clear Direct hangar today. We are winging the Rans S21. I've got Bill helping me, I've got Kobe helping me, and then a couple other helpers are showing up this afternoon. So I'm gonna walk you through what I perceive as the process. I don't know, I've never done this before, so I'm just reading the instructions and doing the best we can. I do wanna catch you up on the jack lugs, which I just installed. I filmed some a little bit yesterday, so I'll roll that, and then we'll come back to the wings. Jim, roll the tape. More upgrades, I got the jack lugs from Rands, which are essentially just a piece of steel that you attach inside of the gear strut to make it a lot easier to jack up the airplane. Because right now I have it on a sawhorse and it's about to get a lot heavier with an engine and wings and everything else. So uh, clearly this is a creature comfort that it goes right there. Um, it was really easy to kind of take off everything since I've done it twice before, right? So I'm gonna do this on the right side and then the left side. Um, the only issue I'm running into Oh, first off, a couple, couple comments that have, people have made, which goes back to the reason why I am putting this all on YouTube, because I am a first-time builder, and you guys have my back, and I thank you for that. The first comment that I will address is a mistake that I did, was I torqued these bolts down that um, connect the two halves of the, the hub together um, after I had inflated the tire. It seems obvious now, but just something you don't think about if you've never done it. So um, I'm going to deflate this, retorque those to the spec values. So that's going to fix one thing. The other thing, a couple of people commented they didn't think I had enough grease packed in there. Um, so, and with just taking it out, you're going to, you're going to lose some grease, I suppose. So I'm going to repack those, make sure that I am completely happy that the grease is squeezing out between the rollers and um, put everything back together. So the only issue I'm running into, because this is going really smooth, is let me show you. Um, the bolt length. So when you order these, you have to tell what bolt length you need. I was on the road on a trip and I didn't have anything. So I just looked at the parts manual and saw what I, what I used. And it, I don't know if this is the wrong bolt size or what, it's so close, let me show you. Not super happy with the shaft, the unthreaded part of the bolt showing through. You go, well, okay, well, there's a washer. Sure enough, there is a washer. You're correct. So let's get said washer. Wasn't gonna film today, so I didn't bring any tripods or whatnot, but um, you can still see that it's showing a little bit of the shank, or the, whatever you call that, the unthreaded portion of the bolt. So um, I'm not gonna fret and get a different size bolt. All I'm gonna do is put a washer over there to back the bolt out just a hair, and that should take care of that, no problem. So sourcing that washer shouldn't be a big deal. I have a uh, young gentleman named Colton coming to help me today. He's a local high school kid. He and his dad came out and visited uh, another Cal Poly grad, go Mustangs. And I'm super stoked to have his help. So he's on his way. I asked him to stop at Ace Hardware, get some grade eight hardware, some three eighths washers, and we'll, they'll hopefully fit and fix this problem. We'll have this buttoned up in no time. While I was waiting for him, here's an update on the baffling. I got the, the dipstick put back in after having taken that out for the baffling. Got the four inch oil cooler duct in right side baffling looks pretty darn good and i'm pretty much done to the point where i'm gonna finish everything off when i mount the engine on the engine mount in the airplane because these guys i i don't want to finalize this before i kind of have a cowling in place for the inlet ducts because i don't want to have a cooling issue I, I want this to work really really well so i'm going to employ some small techniques that i'm learning along the way and since this is clear direct resources technically i want to give you some resources that um, potentially aren't in the manual to res respect to torques and part numbers because uh, it took me a little bit of time to to find these and it's just nice to have so do your own research verify these numbers the larger bolts here the uh a n well they're three eighths bolts a n six those get torqued to 190 inch pounds and then the smaller ones on top 
those are 140 inch pounds. Those ones, the number sevens are 516 bolts, so in fives. And then the ones are back here. These are, well, these four bolts have Norlock washers and those are 100 inch pounds since it's a quarter inch bolt. And here are the part numbers for the Norlock um, washers and bolts. There you have it. Okay, hope that helps. Oh, before I move on, cotter pins. So this guy right here, you know, every time you take off the wheel, you're gonna need a new cotter pin and nowhere does it say what kind of cotter pin. So trial and error, I discovered it to be an AN380-38, uh, AKA a 330 seconds by two inches long, AKA an MS24665. So buy a bunch of those because you don't want to be stressed about getting a cotter pin in uh, anytime you change your tire. So I've got like 16 of them here. Got my helper here. Colton, say what's up. Uh, <laughs> Dude, thanks. I forgot you got to take off the... Oh. <clears throat> again. You did it again. The, uh, what is it, the rotor right there to get at the bolts we're trying to crank down. So... Um, haven't seen those in a while. Nice. All right. So I was actually reviewing my old video, which is, uh, was helpful for the torque value. So hundred inch pounds on those. All right. So we've deflated it. Oh yeah. These little spacers in here too. Well, that went really well. Happy to have those installed. And now we can load up a plane with whatever weight we want. So let's put some wings on. What do you say? Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna make a custom oil door because I found this surplus quick release latch, similar to the one on my Bonanza, that I like, and I don't wanna to have to grab a screwdriver for the quarter turn nuts. So I designed a new flute, um, fuel door. I could probably cut it off <clears throat> out of the existing one, but it's just gonna be a lot more accurate and simple to do since I'm already doing this mass order for Send, cut, send. So here's, here's the drawing for the, the fan, then the firewall plug, and then also the shim for the cabin heater. Fast forward a couple days. Here are my parts. Here's the shim, stainless steel. Here's the firewall patch, stainless steel. Uh, I think those are both just uh, 30 thousandth. And then this is 40 thousandth oil door. <laughs> and I went a little crazy here. <laughs> I don't know, just a fun piece. Um, you'll be able to see it just, you know, looking down on the, uh, on the boot cowl through the windshield because <laughs> why not? All right. We're back to today. We've got the wing on sawhorses. We've clearly got <laughs> the important stuff protected, all the avionics. We don't want any iron filings going in there. And we've got the aft spar attach fitting just temporarily in place okay the rear spar has three vertical holes and then that's it this has two horizontal holes so what in the figures manual this says to do is to bolt this on just using one hole and then eventually once you get the wing on you're going to test for incidents and then drill that second hole and set the angle of his incidents so that's um that's the important thing to know on that, at least what I think. And then the first thing to do is start your measurements because you want to trim the T-bone. So this is the T-bone, I assume. Um, and we have to trim this eventually to fit inside of the leading edge spar, which is this extruded D-shaped aluminum. So we take the measurement from the front edge of this plate aft to the center of this hole. Okay, you take that measurement, which they say it a little bit differently in the, in the book, but then you apply from this hole, the aft attach hole right here, and then run it forward and then cut to, to the distance right here. For me, it's about only an eighth of an inch. And then once uh, you've got that filed down and keep it as right angle as you can, then you measure the distance here and then go from this, which is already cut forward and then cut that. And then you should have something that fits inside of the spar 
drop a big bolt in through here, the aft uh, nut right there, and then a big bolt this direction through the aft attach fitting. Okay, that's my understanding of it. We're gonna start taking some measurements. I'll get some uh, time lapse to hopefully show these wings going on uh, without a hitch. That's the, that's the plan anyway. Anyway, thanks to my helpers today. Let's get to it. Okay, we got it marked. The further out mark, the small one, is 46 and 3 eighths. I backed it off just a hair so that I have it, uh, the ability to correct anything with a file and file the last 30 seconds of an inch. But um, we're going to use a brand new hacksaw blade, 18 tooth per inch. All right. Not too shabby. Yeah, I kind of nicked this, so we thought, eh, it might be good to cushion it with some duct tape. But not too bad. We'll remeasure and get a file out and clean it up and move on to the front side. Right there, so 2.283. And then, so that's, wow, that's a lot. We'll measure that again, but it's quite a bit of material we gotta take off. Trying to be organized, waiting for the helpers to arrive. We've got the leading edge spar, bolts and hardware here. The trailing edge spar, the bolts are already uh, in station three, but here's the hardware. The aft spar attach fitting, uh, I should say the, the measurement. So that's three eighths, this is a half inch, this is nine sixteenths. And then the strut is unique because it uses one five eighths and then also an 11 16 for the nut. So the bolt's 5 8 but then the, the nut's 11 16 So we got everything ready to go. Everything's in place. Um, we got the lift struts down there ready to go. So the order in which we're gonna do this is the station three, the aft spar, then the forward spar, and then with the person at the wingtip still holding it, do the wing strut. So here we go. All right, ready? Yep. Oh, shoot! Oh, man. It's the opposite of NASCAR. It turns right real well. One wing down, what did we learn? I don't know, it's just, that that four people is pretty much mandatory, oh. wouldn't you say? But there's no way two people yeah. are putting this in. Yeah. yeah, two people. I mean, if you like cut everything so that there's slop, which you don't really want, then it would go on easier. Yeah. I like things fitting nice and tight. I still can't see it. You still can't see it? Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna recoup a little bit, take a quick break, and then put the right thing on. I had the easy job. Thanks, guys. Oh, what a huge milestone. This is, this feels so good, but let's debrief this a little bit because uh, I figure I'll pass along some tips that uh, maybe I wish I would have known. Uh, nothing too groundbreaking. This was, I, I'd say the biggest thing is having eight hands total, I think was almost mandatory. Maybe, th maybe six hands, three people, but um Definitely not two. Manual states that two can do it. Uh, <laughs> if you know what you're doing and uh, have done it before, maybe, but I'd recommend probably having four people. Okay, uh, other things. Okay, first thing, let's go in order. So we attached the rear spar attached fitting. That was pretty fine. And then came this. You might've seen in the time lapse we put on each wing twice. We had to take it off because I had to ground the T-bone down a little bit. I That's the mistake I, I would have preferred. I didn't want to make it too small, so I was pretty conservative with the amount that I left, um, and aligning it and getting it in was a bit challenging. So we had to take it off, file down, you know, a 64th more, and then clean it off, prime it. I didn't prime it because these are coming off for paint. I will prime it for the um, final time, and then get the bolt in, and then you still can't drop the wing, uh, you got to work on the, the strut. This 
hardware is a little challenging, but take off these two access covers. Um, the only reason it was challenging because I didn't realize I had forgotten that it takes two different size um, uh, socket and wrench combination. Um, so have those on hand, ready to go. That's one thing I did do well is I had my <laughs> chart of hardware and bolts and stuff ready to go, but still it was a bit frantic having people waiting on me and holding stuff while I worked. So I can't thank them enough. So this went in just fine. Well, <laughs> the initial time I, I was trying to fit it over this fitting. Like anyway, I, <laughs> thanks to Colton, the 16 year old to tell me, Hey, you're, you're putting it in the wrong way. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't fitting. Anyway, <laughs> it's obvious now that's how it goes. Um, so I'd say the hardest part of this whole thing didn't come on the left wing, came on the right wing. This, this thing went in perfectly. The struggle came on this one. I wish that I had test aligned everything in place um, but it would have been nice to have somebody hold it hold the lift strut right there in place and then just make sure all the hardware goes in just fine everything's aligned because um because you're you're drilling out these two holes um and they have to be perfectly aligned and mine were just off a hair so initially i i, I kind of tried to grind the hole a little bit with or file the hole a little bit bigger but ended up um, what i had to do was um, swing the strut down to get me some space and then um, just take another drill through it to to just realign all the holes. Yeah, I opened it up just a hair, but everything fits nice and snug. So that was the only uh, major challenge with this whole thing was, was these two holes weren't perfectly uh, aligned. Hopefully I'm making sense with that. I apologize if I'm not, If uh, and ask your questions in the comments if I can explain that any better. Um, but then once that went in, man, um, everything, nothing's tightened down, right? I haven't, I haven't, um, you don't need to take the time to, yeah, put it all, screw on the nuts and make sure they're not going to fall off, which I've done, <clears throat> but nothing is relying on the torque of a, of a bolt right here. It's a really nice design. It goes on, you know, again, relatively smoothly, easily, nothing's damaged in the process. And after we were done with that, uh, <laughs> Just for aesthetic purposes, I wanted to see how these looked. And they look fantastic. The Aerosport products, carbon wingtips installed. And, oh, okay. I think the last real note to talk about is the aft spar attach fitting drilling out the second holes. Okay. It's going to be hard for me to show you, but reading ahead. So this is what this looks like. I had no idea kind of how this, this went. So hopefully this this helps you. Um, so again, this hole is not drilled through the spar yet. So once everything is tightened down, torqued down, it's kind of in its final, um, everything is secure and where it's going to live. You want to drill this out to size number 11. Then um, I think I'll need somebody else to here to support this. You're going to take out this bolt and then put it through the next highest bolt. Because remember, there's three vertical right there. And and then you're going to drill out the coinciding, uh, whatever, <laughs> hole, bolt through the spar on the top, and then put it down in the bottom hole, and then drill that other hole. So you'll have three that are existing, and then three new holes that are existing over here. And the way they talk about that in the manual is that that will aid in flight test. And I guess that's incident adjustment. If you need a little bit more incidence, you put it, uh, what, in the bottom holes. If you need less then you put either neutral or the top holes. I'm guessing that's in the rigging section in the back of the text manual. So uh, as well as hopefully in the EAA uh, test flying guide, I'm sure it'll talk about that. So what is next? After, now that I have this installed, um, I'm probably gonna put on a flap because at some point I'm gonna need to fit up the flap gap seal as well as I think there's a gap seal under here. but. The reason why I wanted to get these on was for the skylight and windshield. So, but I can't really get that on until the boot cowl is done. <laughs> okay. So I think it's really probably going to be back to the engine. The engine's a couple days from being ready to hang. The wings are installed. I couldn't be more happy to uh, have this milestone 
met and behind me and continuing on we've got a tail to put on that just that shouldn't go go too hard but i'd still have to do the trim motor all right i'm, <laughs> I'm getting distracted from my task which is to sign off thanks again for watching until next time you're clear direct <laughs>